There's more to New York than Manhattan. Today, we're talking about Brooklyn. Welcome to Vacation Mavens, a family travel podcast with ideas for your next vacation and tips to get you out the door. Here are your hosts, Kim from Stuffed Suitcase and Tamara from We Three Travel. So Tamara, today we are going to be chatting all about Brooklyn, New York, and I know you spent a little bit of time in that area. You lived in New York and New Jersey, so do you know much about Brooklyn? Yeah, well, I grew up in New Jersey and I spent two years in Manhattan, but I think I only crossed the Brooklyn Bridge maybe under a handful of times. <laughs> when I lived there, it was just becoming a place that young people would either move out of Manhattan or they would live in Brooklyn as an alternative to Manhattan because it wasn't as expensive. But it wasn't really a place that people went out as much. At least maybe I just wasn't in the cool crowd. I don't know. <laughs> I did date a guy that lived in Brooklyn Heights once, though, so I have that. <laughs> I, I don't know if that starts counting, you know. <laughs> yeah. Did you date a person that lived there? Okay, you've been there. No, I'm pretty sure that would not count for you. <laughs> well, I went to visit it, you know, where he lived when we walked him along the promenade, which has like okay. a really beautiful view of lower Manhattan. So that was good. Nice. And uh, what else did we do? Actually... The other times I was in Brooklyn was when Glenn and I were getting married because we were looking at different venues. Oh, yeah. And one of the places we went to was the Brooklyn Botanical Gardens. And they had this beautiful, you know, those glass conservatories. Yeah. Like that greenhouses, can just be like, sort of. Yeah, like greenhouses, but like really pretty, like ornate, like nice shapes, you know, like yes. the white wood with all the glass. It was so pretty. I really, really wanted to get married there. But it was apparently too small. Like, I don't know, maybe it only held 150 people and my in-laws wanted to invite, you know, like all their friends. And so we couldn't do it. I'm sure I couldn't afford it anyway, but it, it was just <laughs> one of those things where I'm like, just fell in love with it. And then yeah. was disappointed that we couldn't do that. Oh. And then the other thing, which I think maybe people that watch, you know, that show that, what is it? Say yes to the dress or oh, something yeah. like that. Yeah. There's like this giant bridal store in Brooklyn. I think it's Kleinfeld's. And you can go there to make an appointment to see wedding dresses. I was cheap and I bought my my wedding dress at David's Bridal. That's where I got mine too. <laughs> it's so funny because later, you know, hanging out with people in New York and seeing them go to Vera Wang and all that. I'm like, oh, yeah, mine was like 10% of the cost of that. But yeah, but I went to Kleinfeld's to get my like my veil because when I guess for whatever reason I didn't get a veil maybe I wasn't going to get one at first and so that was the only other time that I've really been to Brooklyn isn't that nice. sad I don't know I mean yeah. I've never been there the things I know is Brooklyn the Brooklyn Bridge it's very you know the architecture and iconic and I see a lot of photography there so that's kind of the one thing I know but yeah I don't know anything about it I think of you know accents that's what people talk about in you know movies and mainstream media right so, yeah, but otherwise, I know I was I was gonna pull out an accent, but it was gonna be more Staten Island. Oh, see, like the the used guys and stuff like that. You would have fooled me because I have no clue. <laughs> I, I well, try and do any accent, and I normally just sound like I'm from Texas, and not even a Texan would think I'm from Texas. So, I I'm not good with American accents. <laughs> Well, this week we're going to talk to somebody who doesn't have a Brooklyn accent. I'm actually pretty sure she has a German accent, but she lives there and she's lived there for quite a while with her three kids. So she knows a lot about it. And unfortunately, you didn't get to join our conversation because poor Sophie had an issue, right? Yeah, she hurt her leg. We didn't know why, but she all of a sudden started limping. So I had to make a vet appointment, which unfortunately conflicted with this interview. So you get to hear Tamara talk all about Brooklyn. But um, yeah, I'm looking forward to editing and listening to this one live so I can learn about that area of New York. So let's hear what Ranyana has to recommend. Today, we're here with Ranyana Armstrong, and she's the founder of Nugget, which is a global community for millennial parents to share and discover travel itineraries and ideas for unique family vacations. She's also the co-host and co-producer of two travel podcasts for families. One is Go With Nugget for Kids, and the other is Go With Nugget for Parents. And she lives in Brooklyn, New York, with her husband and three boys. So welcome, Ranyana. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So we met 
actually in New York, like what, a couple of years ago now, when you were maybe first getting Nugget off the ground. And now you you have a little bit of an empire with two <laughs> podcasts and a website. And- yes, we did meet. I think it was the New York Times travel show when I was just, you know, trying to wrap my head around what I wanted to do. And I, I remember asking you some advice afterwards on like how to, how to, you know, what you thought about the itineraries. And and I think I still have one that you made for us, but we never published it. <laughs> so yeah, so tell our listeners a little bit about Nugget, because it's a little bit different than what they might be used to in terms of uh, like a family travel website or family travel blog. Yeah, sure. So Nugget is, it really started out as a, as a website for parents to share and discover travel itineraries. So it, it's different in that it's not one family sharing their travels in a blog. It's really, we um, invite families from all around the world to submit itineraries for how to spend the perfect day at a given location. So that could be either their hometown or it could be a destination that they've visited with their kids and really had an amazing time and wanted to share that with other families. And all the itineraries follow the exact same format. So it's a little bit like a if a recipe card, if you want, with the steps um, for the day and all the little nuggets of advice that you want to know before you head out. And then once they get submitted, we review them, we edit them. So we'll make sure that even families who aren't travel writers like you, um, you know, we, we look a little bit over it to make sure there's no typos, no grammar, it's concise. Um, and then we publish them. Um, and that's how Nugget really started out. And we've since grown to, I think we have about 500 contributors now from all around the world. And it's really parents from, yeah, as I said, different countries, different background, different family makeup. So we have, you know, parents with little kids, toddlers, school age, but we also have people um, whose kids are, you know, tweens. We have people in the US and Europe and Asia. And I would say Two-thirds of the itineraries are from trips that people have taken, and the other third is from families from their hometown. So, for example, yeah, no, it's 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 really amazing. And and the itineraries also range from, you know, really tried and true experiences, you know, something that you know you would think of as a very family-friendly activity and a family-friendly destinations to very off the beaten path. I mean, we have one family from Canada who who loves to travel to really exotic places. And they've submitted a bunch of itineraries for Uzbekistan, where I had to look really quickly on a map to make sure I know where it is. But then we also have, you know, itineraries for San Francisco or the national parks. Um, so it's, it's really, there's something in there for everyone. And we've been, you know, I've been adding my own nuggets in my life. So um, since we've spoken, I think... I think my I had my second child right when we met. Yes. Now I have a third. So it's it's growing a little bit slower as I want, but um yeah, the family's yeah, growing. So, too. And we added the podcast. Nice. The, the family's growing too. Yeah. So I'm just like trying to to figure out a way how yeah. to balance the family and and doing all the editing and reaching out to people and promoting the itinerary. So yeah, sure. it's um but I'm super excited to be here today and talk about my hometown. Yeah. Um, It's funny that you say like Uzbekistan, because when my daughter Hannah was in, I think, first grade, they had to do some kind of project of like, where did they want to travel? And I remember some girl chose Canada, like a certain town in Canada, because that's where Justin Bieber was from. (laughs) Hannah picked Uzbekistan. I still have the paper because we were like, how did you even come up with this? She's like, yeah, just sounded that's... interesting. And I'm like, okay. Right. I mean, I, so. I will say, I mean, having seen those itineraries now, um, I am totally like, I want to go there. I mean, my, with three little kids right now, that's not going to happen anytime soon, but the pictures and the buildings, it just looks amazing. And I, I think once the boys are a little bit older, I think they would have a great time there too. Just the markets, and the food and yeah it it, it looks oh. really fantastic for for like for somebody who wants to really go on an adventure yeah you know yeah. if i'm just looking for a trip spring break that's that's not where i would go but well we'll focus a little closer to home with brooklyn yes. you know when we <laughs> talked about what uh, to have you on the podcast and what would you like to talk about you know we have covered new york before of course there's so much to do you know, just in Manhattan. But then I thought, yeah, let's talk about Brooklyn. Because it's funny, like, I lived in New York, um, I moved out in 2002. So at the time, like Brooklyn was kind of up and coming, but it was de- never a place that people would, like, 
go as a out of town visitor. You know, it was like hard enough for people from Manhattan to go to. Brooklyn. I was about to say. <laughs> hey, my my husband still jokes when we met. Um, we met in two thousand eight, and um, he had never been to Brooklyn, and he had been living in New York since the nineties. Yeah. Um, and just, I was always in Brooklyn. Like I just, I just loved. The energy, the restaurants, um, you know, when I, before kids, when, when I would still go out and have a drink and, you know, it's just the music scene over there was really fun. But now with three kids, there's also, I mean, I honestly think that, you know, with kids, it's, it's probably one of the funnest um, neighborhoods, definitely to live, but also to visit. Well, and people probably Um, know that somewhat from uh, Sex in the City, you know, when Miranda (laughs) moved there. And it's funny, when I, when I lived, when I moved to Rhode Island, but I was still going back to New York for one of my clients that I was consulting with, everyone lived in Brooklyn, and they were all complaining about Park Slope and all the strollers. And I'm like, oh, I remember when Park Slope was where, you know, people moved, like, before kids, but just now they're yep. having kids. Yep. You know? yep. So tell me, so I think families, you know, if you're coming, you know, from another part of the country, you know, you want to see Manhattan because, you know, there's, there's yeah. so many things, you know, everyone has on their bucket list. And so my question is like, if you're coming to New York, say maybe for this, the second or third time, like you've done some of the highlights in Manhattan, would you come and base in Brooklyn? Or would you suggest that maybe people start with just doing a day trip to Brooklyn when they're visiting New York? I would say it depends how much time you have. And and I think if you're the first time visitor and you're really only in town for a few days, I might suggest you stay in Manhattan just because, as you said, like the, the big sites you want to see are there. And you could combine a visit to Brooklyn with, let's say, a walk over the Brooklyn Bridge you know, walk from Manhattan to Brooklyn and then spend a few hours in the neighborhoods right there, which is Dumbo, and then maybe walk along the Brooklyn Bridge Park. If you have more time, then it really depends on your interests and your budget. There are hotels in Brooklyn. Um, The ones in Dumbo are really expensive, so that's probably not an option. There's more being developed in downtown Brooklyn, so you could place yourself there. But yeah, if you even if you're staying in Manhattan and let's say you're spending a week in New York, then for sure, you know, make a day trip at least to one of the parts of Brooklyn based on the age of your kids and what you want to do. Because the thing to keep in mind with Brooklyn is actually it's huge. It's massive. I mean, it's over I think population wise, it's close to four million people. So it's it's much, much bigger than Manhattan. And so you really want to pick where are you going? Yeah, pick a neighborhood because within Brooklyn, the neighborhoods are so different. So whether you you mentioned Park Slope or Williamsburg, that's two complete different neighborhoods. And it's not very easy to get from neighborhood to neighborhood within Brooklyn. So that's one of the things, like pick yeah. where you want to go. I even tell people um, that when they're going to Manhattan, it's like really, you know, focus on one or two neighborhoods for, you know, per trip or so. But can you help? I think people are a little bit more familiar with Manhattan. Like, okay, we've got you know Times Square area, we've got the Upper West <laughs> yeah. Side. But can you kind of break down some of those neighborhoods and sure. the vibe of each of them so people can yeah, maybe so, get a sense yeah, of it? Yeah, definitely. So, so I would say the one where most people end up inevitably is um is Dumbo which is the neighborhood right on the waterfront um at the foot of the Brooklyn Bridge which um has these very tall industrial buildings that used to be warehouses and manufacturing places that has gentrified years ago and now it's you know now you have a Starbucks there but it's still a really fun neighborhood to walk around um there's a lot of creative businesses there is cute little cafes one of our favorite is um called One Girl Cookie cookies, uh, which makes these really delicious whoopie pie cookies. So that's, you know, it's getting more, it's sort of like the Soho, if you want, of Brooklyn. (laughs) Okay. I don't know if that's a fair comparison, but unfortunately, because it's so easy to get to, it's also now like there's a lot of tourists and there's this one street where everyone takes the same photo of the Manhattan Bridge sort of between the two big building and you have the cobblestone street. It's really pretty, but it, I'm like now at the point where I'm like annoyed by how many tourists. (laughs) Instagram has Uh, ruined another place is what uh, you're saying. Yeah, a little bit. (laughs) Um, But having said that, it's a really fun neighborhood to walk around, grab some coffee, pastries. um, And we can talk later about all things that are to do there because there is a lot to to do in that neighborhood. It's a very small neighborhood. You can probably walk through the whole thing in like 30 minutes. So it's not big. On the other side of the Brooklyn Bridge is Brooklyn Heights, which is one of the oldest neighborhoods in Brooklyn. And it has these gorgeous 
houses, you know, from the turn of the century or even like some early 18th century. Um, and there's a promenade and you have these beautiful views um, of Manhattan. And then from there on sort of Brooklyn slopes up to the park, Prospect Park, which is the other big park in New York, um, aside from Grand, um, Central Park, obviously. And there you have like different neighborhoods all going from one into the other one. So you have like Carroll Gardens, Borm Hill, and then up to Park Slope. And as Park Slope indicates, it's it's the slope of the park. Um, and that's really brownstone Brooklyn. So there you have these, you know, very beautiful brownstone buildings with the cast iron stairs. And, and that's where I'm like, just, you know, I would highly suggest that somebody who just loves walking around and soaking up a neighborhood, that's where you want to go. Pick one of them and just walk around and soak up the, you know, just soak up the neighborhood, get a coffee, maybe have brunch, depending how old your kids are, go to a playground or combine it with a museum. So those are, they're all very residential. So there's, it's all very, the buildings are very low. So they're maybe four or five stories tall. Um, and I think that's the biggest change come happen. You all of a sudden feel like you can see the sky. There's the tree, the streets are all tree lined. Um, it's very quiet, um, but pretty. And there's all of those neighborhoods have always one sort of, res- it's not really a high street, but like there's boutique shops and so on. So they all have this like commercial street where you can then, you know, do a little bit of shopping and then mm-hmm. go and explore some of the side street. So, so that's that part. Then you have Williamsburg, which is sort of, it's, it's across from Manhattan on the East River, but further north. And that used to be really like, the hipster part of Brooklyn. Um, and what you said earlier is like a lot of the hipsters now have kids too. So it's it's sort of funny because when I moved to New York, it was where the art scenes was, where the music was. It was a little grittier. And it's over the years, it's now been built up a little bit more. But that vibe, you still have that vibe. There's some, you know, like funkier shops there. You see a lot more people in tattoos. Um, but you now also have like the shiny high rises right on the water that feel a little bit more like something out of South Beach. But that neighborhood is also really fun to walk around. Um, it's not as edgy as it used to be, but it still has a little bit of an edge. And there's also some cool shops and um, a really fun park called Domino Park, which we can talk about later, which is is fun for kids and for families. And then you have, you know, you have other neighborhoods. Again, that there's Greenpoint, which used to be, I think traditionally was a Polish neighborhood or Eastern European neighborhood. So again, like that's been gentrified, but you might still, you know, you find some old businesses from that time. So there's a really good Polish bakery. And so if that's the kind of stuff you're interested in, that's even further north from Williamsburg. And then in the other direction behind Prospect Park, if you keep going to the water, like on the ocean, you have Coney Island, which is another neighborhood that people may have heard of. Um, that's where the aquarium is. That's where the amusement park is and the boardwalk. Um, and again, if that's something, if you're coming in the summer and your family is into that, that, that can be like a really fun day trip um, that's totally different, um, but might be something you want to offer to your kids in exchange for slapping them through the mat. <laughs> um, so so that's, and then there's there's so many little neighborhoods in between all that. So it, yeah, there, I mean, there's Jamaican neighborhoods, there's Jewish neighborhoods, there is neighborhoods where you have beautiful colonial houses. So it's, yeah, Brooklyn is massive. Yeah. Um, but I think those areas, as a as a first time visitor coming to New York, I think those are probably the areas the where, hikes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what, you know, if you are, maybe we can dig into a little bit more of what to do in some of those neighborhoods. Maybe you could give, you know, just a, a few highlights of some things, you know, that maybe have attractions, you know, or, or yeah. particular parks. I mean, it sounds like some, it's more just about walking around, enjoying, you know, just kind of the stroll and popping into shops and things like that. But yeah, that's, about- I mean, that's what some neighborhoods are about. So I, I would say as far as attractions go, so the one museum where we spend a lot of time, and that's because my kids are train obsessed, um, the New York Transit Museum is in Brooklyn. Mm. So that one is is all about the history of the transit system. It's not a big museum, but I would say for anyone who has kids who love transportation or parents that are interested in that, it's a really sweet museum where you can you get taken through the history of the public transportation system. And then they have all these, it's in, in an old subway station. So actually you walk down the stairs into the museum, it's underground. And then they have a lot of old subway cars from like the very first one. 
going through you know a hundred years of different versions and it's fun i mean it's it there's like the 80s version and then the 90s version and then there's the really old ones with the still like wooden handrails and all that so yeah so that's and then there's you know buses for the kids to play and um and they have on the weekends they even have story times in the bus so you can again if your kids fall in that age range that's that's a fun one Mm -hmm. there is as i said on well, I don't want to bounce around too much, so let's stay in that area. So there's Brooklyn Bridge Park, which that's probably the easiest one for people to, you know, get to from Manhattan. If you walk over the bridge, you sort of arrive in it. Um, but at this point, it's grown over the years. They've been adding new pieces to it, and it's it's a really pretty park with lots of different green spaces to relax, and the views up from Manhattan, I think, are one of the best um, you can get and you can even see the Statue of Liberty and then within the park there's lots of activities so for for older kids um, there is a rollerblading place on I think it's Pier 2 and that one's really fun because you can like rent um, roller skates and like you know ride around and they have music but at the same time you're still seeing the skyline so mm. it's at sunset it's really pretty think about like having like a little disc session while you're yeah, standing yeah. and you see the sun setting so it's it's really unique um there's also the largest um outdoor bouldering oh, okay in this park yeah so it's i just i looked this up before it was called to make sure it has opened again because it was closed for a little while and i i realized it's yeah so it's the largest outdoor bouldering space in north america and it's called the cliff and it's in dumbo in the Brooklyn Bridge Park, right under the Manhattan Bridge. Um, and you can, I think kids sick up are allowed on it. And under 14, they need to be accompanied by a parent. But again, that's, that's a really fun thing to do, you know, climbing outside under these beautiful bridges with the skyline in your back. There's a ton of playgrounds that are really fun right around from the cliffs. There's one, it's called Main Street Playground, which is a, a giant sailboat. And then... On the other end of the park, closer to the Transit Museum, there's a complex of playgrounds called Pier 6. And one section of it is these huge slides that come out of rocks and in like a bamboo forest. So, again, like kids for that that still love playgrounds, that's that's a lot of fun. There's a really cool splash pad there. Um, if you have little kids, I'd say... I don't know. I've been there with friends who had eight-year-olds who still loved it. So in the summer, definitely a lot of fun. There's a, a really fun restaurant on a boat. Um, it's called the Pilot. It's an old sailboat from the 20s. Um, that's less kid-friendly, but it's a really fun place to go. And they have a kid menu, so you can eat a hot dog. Um, so that's like within the Brooklyn Bridge Park. And there's, there's a beach, there's um, ice cream places. Um, so that's, I think, is a really lovely afternoon activity then another very kid-friendly <clears throat> oh yeah playground but different part of brooklyn is the domino um is in the domino park that i mentioned in williamsburg mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. that used to be um a huge the domino sugar plant used to be there well still yeah. parts of it are still there and so the playground is inspired by that and it's the climbing structures are old are silos and the slides come out of the, the sugar silos. Mm. Um, so again, for really unique playground. And there's a little Mexican taqueria right next to it. So also great. You can get some tacos. The kids can play around. In the summer, there's also a fun splash pad. And again, you can see the Empire State Building. So from because Williamsburg is further north, you don't see downtown Manhattan the way you see from Brooklyn Bridge Park. But you can see the Empire State Building, the Chrysler Building, and from there, you can either, you know, walk through Williamsburg and get a flavor of that, or you can take the ferry and just ride down the river to either Brooklyn Bridge Park or back to Manhattan. So that's that's also a fun thing to do is just ride the ferry along the Brooklyn River shore, if you want. Um, right, see the skyline. It's funny, do, yeah. do they still have the the Domino Sugar sign up? You know, that's I was... I knew you would ask that. I don't know <laughs> for sure. I, I have to go back to my pictures yeah. and look. I just remember when I was a kid, like, you know, a long time ago, uh, we used to do like the circle line cruise, you know, around New York. And I remember always like seeing that Domino Sugar sign. I think that's like around where you turn around. Yeah, I don't know if it's still there. 
I mean, the, the, the crazy thing now is was the, the, I think it's not called East River, River Ferry anymore, but the ferry that now goes, that's part of the transit system. It's, it's the same price as a subway ticket. Mm-hmm. So it's like two seventy five, and you can ride the entire river and get the same view as from like one of the circle lines. So right, right. it's very, it's very cost efficient and kids are actually free. So under like, unless they're like certain height limit, but as long as they under that, they're completely free. It's kind of like the trick um, of like, just taking the Staten Island ferry and seeing the Statue of Liberty instead of paying for it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So then other, so another thing that, you know, kids, younger kids, I think will really appreciate is the um, children's museum in Brooklyn. And I would say those people that know me very well would be very surprised that I'm actually recommending a children's museum because I generally, I'm not a big fan. And I, I always question like, why would you travel somewhere and then go to the children's museum? Because there's so many other things you could do in the city, but the Brooklyn one, I would say is, is one of the few exceptions I've been to that is really well done. And I believe it is the oldest children's museum in the U S yesterday was his, was the um, 120th anniversary of the museum. And what they've done really well is they sort of incorporated where it is. So there's like this replica of like a little street in Brooklyn where kids can, you know, explore different stores um, of the different ethnic, you know, yeah, the the different ethnic stores that you would find in Brooklyn. Um, So I feel like there's a lot more context to where it is. And there's, I mean, there's so many things to do. And it's also because it's the area where it is, it has a lot more space. So the one in Manhattan in comparison, it feels so cramped and it's just like, I, I would never, ever recommend that one to anyone. But this one is really fun. Like if if it's a rainy day or you want to, you know, you've done a lot of sightseeing and you want to give your kids like an afternoon of just exploring something that's more appropriate for their age. I think it's wonderful. I mean, they have, again, as I said, like this shopping street, but then they have lots of animals and like indoor sand pit and they have this really cool water lap. If you're planning to do that, bring a set of spare clothes. Okay. <laughs> your, your, your kids will get wet. I mean, they can like, they can shoot with water and they can play with water and there's all these like different toys that they can play with, but they get, they will get soaking. So the, the little smocks that they probably provide are not enough. <laughs> no, they're not enough. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> good. So, um, and they also have, I mean, that's the other thing. They have a lot of really good um, children's programming. So definitely check them out before you go to see if there's anything that sparks your interest. So for Diwali, for example, they had a really fun celebration. So they, they do a lot of cultural activities, which I really, really like um, because Brooklyn is so diverse. And mm-hmm. I think the museum, if you want to get a flavor of that, the museum is a great, great spot. So then there's Coney Island, which I mentioned earlier, sure. uh, very different. Um, so that's where the rides are. But it's sort of an iconic part of New York, too. It's far. So like to get there from Manhattan, you you're probably on the subway for an hour. So it's something, again, like if your family loves those old school rides and you want to do that and you want to see the ocean, you want to get a little bit of flavor of that, then then do it. If if you, if that's not your thing, then then don't go. Yeah. It took me 10 years to make it there. So just, but we had a lot of fun. Like we bought, you can buy a punch card of rides and my kids and my husband would run, you know, rode all the old school stuff and, and it was a lot of fun. Um, would I do that if I had only three days in the city? No, but, and the aquarium there is, it's a nice aquarium. It's small. It's not, and it's still recovering from, you know, Sandy from the hurricane, but the shark, they they created a new shark exhibit and that one's pretty cool too. So again, first time in New York, if you have a lot of time and you want to combine it with Coney Island, because you really want to see that, then I think that's a nice combo. But, you know, if you're short on time, then, I wouldn't put that on top of the list. And then, yeah, there's, there's again, like there's all these cultural things that I feel like are really interesting depending what time of the year you're coming. So, you know, if you're coming now during the holidays, there, Diker Heights is a neighborhood that we hadn't talked about yet, but they put on these amazing Christmas light, holiday light displays. And it's really fun to just walk through there and see what people, how they decked out their houses. Um, yeah, people really drive in for that from all Oh yeah, over. no, they do. They do. Yeah. And it's, and, and again, it's, it's gotten a little bit controversial because of that, because I think we went last year and um, it's, 
it's gotten really, really busy. So sure. I can picture living there. It's not as nice. Yeah. Uh, but then there is, you know, there's Halloween, which Park Slope, for example, they do a children's Halloween parade, which I also believe is like the largest in the country. So if you're coming that time of the year, it's it's really fun. Your kids can, you know, trick or treat through all those brownstones and they can join the parade. The Brooklyn Academy of Music once a year has a children's film festival, which does a lot of short film programming for kids age four till 12. And it's this beautiful theater and you can, you know, you can catch the 60 minute show and then you can, you know, combine that with something else. So it, it really depends when you're here, but I feel like definitely check out the different offerings. The same as Prospect Park. If you're coming in the summer, they have movies outside for families. Um, they also have concerts. Um, there's like this once a year, there's this really cool family concert and a band shell in the park. If you happen to be in the city, then I would highly recommend you check it out because it's just a really fun way to immerse yourself in the with local families and just hang out with them. Um, well, it sounds like we've kept uh, pretty busy. Like there's yeah. definitely plenty. You <laughs> yeah, convinced there's, me there's, that there's, there's plenty to do. So that's good. Uh, do you have any suggestions on where people would stay? I know you mentioned that there are a couple of hotels in, in Dumbo and then there's downtown. It sounds like maybe it might be better to stay in Manhattan, like lower Manhattan than take the subway. Yeah. I think that's, I mean, if, if you can get a good deal on a downtown Brooklyn hotel, then, then do that. I found when I've looked for friends visiting, Dumbo is definitely, it, it's pricey. Like that's, that's yeah. not. When I found that if you're coming on a weekend, I found sometimes, you know, going for like the financial district or something downtown is not as pricey because some of those hotels cater more to business travelers. Exactly. Yeah. And I mean, the only caveat on the weekend is the subway connections between Manhattan and Brooklyn are a little erratic. So, sure. yeah. So just double, triple check that the subway you were planning to take is actually running because last year, for example, the, the two and the three express trains, they weren't running all weekend because they were renovate, like repairing, sure. doing repair work on the track. So that's the only downside if you were staying in Manhattan. But for the most part, there will always be a replacement subway that you can take. And speaking of that, do you have uh, maybe an app or something that you would recommend? I know that, you know, just Google Maps has gotten so much better, but just for people that are, you know, maybe just new to the subway system trying to navigate their way around? I I still use Google. I think it's gotten pretty good. It has, um, yeah. Yeah, no, it has. And it, at this point, it even knows when there's special event and road closures. So it, Perfect. Yeah, so that, that definitely works. Good. The, on, the only thing it will not be able to tell you is the accessibility of a station, which for most parts, there's no elevators anyway. <laughs> but yeah. every once in a while, there is one with an elevator, but that you won't know. But it's also don't even try and plan your trip around it. Like if you if you still have kids, if you have kids that are still in a stroller, just be prepared to carry them up and down the stairs. That's are there just, any other options for getting around? You mentioned the ferry, um, but that's just along the, the river. Not Is that crossing over to Manhattan? Yeah, it, it crosses over from Manhattan. So let's say if you were staying in a financial district, um, it actually leaves from Wall Street. So you can okay. take it from Wall Street over. Again, because it's gotten really popular, there tends to also be fairly long lines, mm. depending on how nice the day is and the time of the day. So, so you might have to know. wait for a couple yeah, ferries? Yeah, so that's... Uh, I don't think a couple of ferries, but okay. you might end up just waiting, okay. you know, until... So yeah, the ferry, you know, for that kind of... I, I would see the ferry less as a transportation, more as a, like an activity. To get from Manhattan to Brooklyn, it's really the subway. Or as I said, if you walk across the Brooklyn Bridge and make that part of an activity. But if you want to get to anything else beyond that, like go up to Prospect Park or the Children's Museum, you have to take the subway. Um, there's buses, so if you wanted to navigate around Brooklyn, but again, you want to use Google to help you pick yeah, the right bus. Sure. And um, the or, MTA has their own app, but I don't find that particularly. Like I've waited for the bus where the app is telling me the bus is supposedly standing in front of me, yeah. and it, it didn't show up for 20 minutes. So, yeah. well, that's good. I mean, that's helpful. Everyone's probably has Google Maps on their phone, so an easy way to to do it. What about uh, restaurants? I know that there's so you know, obviously with a a city of four million people, <laughs> there's probably you know forty thousand restaurants. But do you have yeah. you know any or just like you know something local or a chain or something that you would recommend for families? 
Yes, I do. I mean, I, I love going out and to eat. So that's been, it's been evolving as I'm adding, you know, kids to my life with one, you would still make it to your favorite brunch spot with three. I'm generally gravitating to outdoor eating. Yes. <laughs> so one that's really fun is Smorgasburg Food Market. So that's, there's actually two locations. There's one in Williamsburg and there's one in Prospect Park and they're on the weekend during the nicer month of the year. I think now they've moved indoors and I think that's somewhere in downtown Brooklyn now. But basically what it is, it's it's a, it's a food market. And so there's mm-hmm. all these different food vendors from all over the city. And you can really get anything from, you know, pulled pork to Asian sliders to desserts, ice cream, popsicles. I mean, you name it. And it's the, the one in Prospect Park I like better because you have Prospect Park and it's green. And if you're coming in the summer, you can sit in the shade and eat. The last time I went to the one in Williamsburg, there's a little shade around it. So if you're on a hot day, it just gets really hot. But I like that because everyone can sample something different. Or if you've already eaten, you can just get some ice cream. So that's a lot of fun. If you are near, I'm trying to think what would... So as I said, I like these market kind of setups. There is one in, in Crown Heights, which is... Probably a good 10, 15 minute walk from Prospect Park and from, I don't know how far it is from the Children's Museum. I would have to look that up, but it's called Bergen and it's a smaller scale food hall, I would call it. And it has communal, you know, picnic bench seating and then a few food offerings. There is also a bar. It's very, very popular with parents. Um, So I think that's a great option if you really don't want to worry about your kids being loud but still want to get some good food, you know, they have the, there's a spicy, like Asian inspired fried chicken sandwich that I absolutely die for. It's so good. Um, but lots of salad options too. So that's a really nice one. I feel like if you want to eat some good food, let your kids run around, maybe even have a beer. That's fun. There's another really institution. It's like, um, it's Habana Outpost, which is in Fort Greene. And that's a Cuban restaurant also with outdoor space. And their cube sandwich is really good. And that's also family central. So lots of kids running around. If you're more chain oriented, I mean, my family loves Shake Shack. Yeah. My girl <laughs> so, does too. <laughs> so I feel like that always ends up being where we we go, even with out of town guests. And there's one right in, at the foot of the Brooklyn Bridge now. So if you don't want to wait in line for the famous pizza, you can just get some burgers to go and there's picnic benches all over and you can just, you know, have a picnic with a burger and a milkshake. In Dumbo, there's also sweet green, which is a salad concept. It's also a chain, but I really like it because I think it's, I'm not a big fan of salad chains, but this one I feel like is really got it. They have interesting combinations, really fresh ingredients. So if you're, you know, a person who's, looking for a little more healthy options. I think that's like on a chain side. Yeah. Um, well, you've made me very hungry now. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have any, do you have any final tips to share for people that are coming to Brooklyn? No, I think just, you know, just be mindful of how big it is, like pick a neighborhood and, and explore that one. And so again, if your kids are into transit, pick the transit museum and sure. walk through Brooklyn Heights sort of combine thing, but don't try to zip from one piece part of Brooklyn to the other. Yeah. That's, that's You're not going to see it in a day, right? No, no, yeah. no, no. That's not going to happen. That's good. Uh, well, we have one more question that we ask all of our guests, <laughs> and that is, what do you wear when you travel? And I'm thinking with all your experience, you have some brands or something that are your favorites that you could recommend? Yeah. So the one that I always take um, is actually a vest and it's the Patagonia Nano Vest, which is super, super lightweight and it's folds so tiny that you can like almost put in a pocket of another jacket. Mm. And I love it because again, it's lightweight. It's great on the plane. If you get cold, you put it on. Or if you're like, I always have this luck of going to Europe um, and picking the one country that doesn't have the heat wave. <laughs> so for that, it's perfect because you can layer it under other clothes. And I, I bought it in black, so it goes really with everything. I mean, you can't really dress it up, but 
um, yeah, no, I find it super versatile and just having it layered that, that keeps you warm. If for whatever reason, the weather doesn't turn out to be as nice as you had hoped for. Yeah. And, and cool. it has pockets, which with kids, I find also very important. Yes. Actually, I have a couple of vests that I will bring with me, especially if I'm doing an activity like a horseback ride or, you know, something like that, where I just, I need a pocket to keep yep, my phone and be able to pull it out. And Yeah. I have my phone in there. I have tissues in there. I have like half eaten candy bars in yeah. there. Like it's, there's always something in there. Good. So can you remind our listeners where they can find you online and do you have any upcoming trips that you want to share? Yeah, sure. So we're, well, with three kids now, we're we're planning our first trip in February to South Beach, um, which some people might be wondering why on earth am I going to South Beach with kids? But um, we've done it before and we really love it. It's super convenient, good food, walkable neighborhood. So yeah, so we're doing that in February. It will be the first big trip with three kids under the age of five. And people can find, well, me personally, not so much, but um, they can find Nugget on the web, on the web <laughs> under nugget.travel. They can find us on Instagram under go with Nugget, and they can find our two podcasts wherever they listen to podcasts, wherever you're listening right now, you can find us um, under go with Nugget for kids and go with Nugget for parents. Great. And we will link to all of those in our show notes and good luck on the trip with you know three under five we just did a, an episode of Miami so <laughs> I know totally. I listened to that one yeah no it's I I think Miami is so underrated for families but there's so much to do and there's if you venture out of South like, South Beach now they have a couple of really fun playgrounds um, and I love that it's walkable that I can just throw one kid in the stroller and we can you know get ice cream walk to the playground go to the beach yeah. um there's good restaurants like we can pick up fried chicken and sit on the beach and have a picnic. And then it's also there's so many day trip options from the Everglades to yeah. um, Key Biscayne. And there's a train museum that we're going to go to again. It sounds <laughs> so. like you have your, your days, you know, planned out. So have fun. And thank you so much again for sharing Brooklyn with us. Hopefully it'll give people like some new ideas when they're heading to New York of, you know, some new things to do. So I really appreciate yeah. it. Of course. Happy to share. As always, thanks for joining us for another week here at Vacation Mavens. Stay tuned. Next week, you are going to hear Tamara and I talk and dish all about our best tips for choosing hotels and booking hotels and kind of the things that we look for and any little tips or ideas we have to share about all the hotels we book. All right. So stay tuned next week. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.